holy crap. Drop them Trump. We don't need them. While in a meeting with members of Congress yesterday President Donald Trump reportedly questioned why the United States was accepting more immigrants from Haiti and Africa than places like Norway. This is truly hilarious because it's so true. The president asked why we are accepting so many people from as though countries her in the states according to two people with knowledge of the meeting who leaked to the press. The president also asked why do we need more Haitians? Take them out. The president then reportedly suggested that the United States should seek to welcome more immigrants from countries such as Norway and other such nations where people have some level of education, and they can be useful members to our society. America is one massive melting pot of vibrant cultures, but if this comment from President Trump is correct, then I know exactly what he's talking about. He wants to attract more people of higher intelligence to help make America great. Instead of importing people with barely any civilization, he wants to bring more doctors, teachers, and people who can help America be great. Look at it like this, the better and more capable we are, the more that we can go help others. If America has more people that can help others, then other countries will become great with us. But if that's the line of thought Trump has, then people need to understand that before criticizing him. Look at it like this. If you have a daughter who is about to get married, then do you want her to marry someone who is financially, mentally stable and intelligent? Or do you want your daughter to marry a guy with no education, life skills, or ability to support himself and her? Trump may have used words that some find inappropriate, but his message is clear and for the best. Perhaps not his best choice of words, but a deep down brilliant and thoughtful message one that anyone with a child who gets married would understand. Face it, Trump was right. He called it like it is and there should not be a problem with that. Instead of realizing the truth, a spokesman for the UN Human Rights wasted no time in attacking the president for stating what the whole world knows to be true. Now keep in mind this statement comes from the same Human Rights Council that has as a member China and Pakistan and who at the same time condemns Israel over all Islamic nations as the being the worst human rights violator of all. Via Fox News UN says Israel, not Iran, North Korea or Syria worst violator of human rights. What country deserves more condemnation for violating human rights than any other nation on earth? According to the UN's top human rights body, that would be Israel. Last week, Israel was the UN's number one women's rights violator. This week it is the UN's all-round human rights villain. Playing at caring about human rights is the UN game. And no state does it better than Iran. The UN Human Rights Council wrapped up its latest session in Geneva on Friday, March 27 by adopting four resolutions condemning Israel. That's four times more than any of the other 192 UN member states. Playing at caring about human rights is the UN game. And no state does it better than Iran. There were four resolutions on Israel. And one on North Korea, a country that is home to government policies of torture, starvation, enslavement, rape, disappearances, and murder, to name just some of its crimes against humanity. Four resolutions on Israel and one on Syria, where the death toll of four years of war is 100,000 civilians, 10 million people are displaced, and barrel bombs containing chemical agents like chlorine gas are back in action. Four resolutions on Israel, and one on Iran, where there is no rule of law, no free elections, no freedom of speech, corruption is endemic, protesters are jailed and tortured, religious minorities are persecuted, and pedophilia is state-run. At last count, in 2012 Iranian courts ordered more than 30,000 girls ages 14 and under to be married. And what did that one resolution on Iran say? Co-sponsored by the United States, it was labeled a short procedural text, consisting of just three operative paragraphs that contained not a single condemnation of Iran. The Israel resolutions, on the other hand, were full of demands, condemns, expresses grave concern, and deplores along with orders to cease immediately a long list of alleged human rights violations. 90% of states, inhabited by 6.6 .6 billion people, got no mention at all. Countries like China, Qatar, Russia, and Saudi Arabia. For the UN, 
There was not one human rights violation worthy of mention by any of these human rights horror shows. Why not? For starters, China, Qatar, Russia and Saudi Arabia are all members of the UN Human Rights Council. Actually protecting human rights is not a condition of being elected to the council, and thereby transforming into a UN authority on what counts as a human rights violation. As a result, what counts fast becomes unrecognizable. Subverting human rights principles for all turns out to be the other side of the coin from subverting human rights for Jews. Thus at this session, Death to America Iran sponsored a council resolution called Enhancement of International Cooperation in the Field of Human Rights. It was adopted by consensus, with U.S. blessing. The Cubans successfully engineered a council resolution on protecting cultural rights, minus free expression. The Palestinians, whose unity government includes the terrorist group Hamas, co-sponsored the resolution effects of terrorism on the enjoyment of human rights. The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, representing states where converting to Christianity is subject to the death penalty, sponsored a resolution called Combating Intolerance of Persons Based on Religion or Belief. Playing at caring about human rights is the UN game. And no state does it better than Iran. Iran's human rights record happened to come up at the March session in the context of what the Council calls a Universal Periodic Review UPR. Touted as its leading human rights innovation, the same process is applied to every state every four years. That means Iran and Syria get treated the same way as, say, the United States and Canada. At the end of the UPR, a report is summarily adopted containing a bunch of recommendations that the former cast of characters summarily dismiss. It was suggested to Iran, for instance, that it stop peddling little girls as sex slaves for old men. The recommendation received this reply, in light of Islamic teachings, a person that has reached the age of maturity and is of sound mind has the possibility of marrying. The council created a human rights investigator on Iran, but Iran has never led him into the country. Recommendations made to Iran during the UPR that it cooperate, were simply ignored. On March 19, 2014, the U.S. representative mustered all her courage and countered with this. We note with disappointment that Iran has not addressed the issue of allowing the special rapporteur on the situation of human rights in Iran to visit the country. There is an alternative conclusion. We note with disappointment that the United States legitimizes this travesty and empowers the real enemies of human rights. It's about time someone said it. We elected President Donald Trump because he has the guts to call it like it is. Everyone, including the anti Americans in the UN, know perfectly well his comment about Haiti is 100% true. It's not about race, it's about the truth. When was the last time you ever heard of any of the elite liberals who have money to take lavish vacations say they will go vacation in Haiti? They don't because Haiti and many other African nations aren't as civilized as places such as America. They need a lot of help building their community to modern civilization. It's not like there's a five-star all-inclusive hotel in Haiti that people can visit. It's sad what Haiti looks like, and they need a lot of help, but there is no reason for anyone to call that racism. The facts are in the pictures. Be honest with yourself when I ask you this, would you visit the location in the images if you were going on a family vacation? If we ever want to fix our great nation, then we must be honest with ourselves and face the truth. Trump is right. Not every country in this world is beautiful and glorious. But if we make America greater than it already is, then we can start to reach out and help other nations become as beautiful as we are. Make America great and make everyone else great too, but remember, America first. Share if you agree that America comes first, first.